because part of what made the Flint River so toxic was General Motors dumping its waste products into the river. Well, as you know, uh, it was announced yesterday that General Motors is going to cut almost 15,000 jobs, 15,000 jobs uh, in a bid to trim costs. Uh, the General Motors says that it's closing down these factories and cutting these jobs because people aren't buying certain cars anymore that General Motors produces, and they are shifting to focus more on automation, automized cars and electric cars. So I guess self-driving cars and electric cars. So the move, which follows job reductions by Ford Motor Company, further pairs the workforce in the sector that President Trump had promised to bolster. Referring to General Motors Chief Executive, Executive Mary T. Barra, he told reporters, I spoke to her and I stressed the fact that I am not happy with what she did. So that's what Trump said. So you have almost 15,000 people that are losing their jobs at four plants, including a plant, in, uh, the idling of the five plants, excuse me, next year will result in the layoffs of 3,300 production workers in the United States and about 2,500 in Canada. The company also aims to trim its salaried staff by 8,000. The cuts represent more than 10% of General Motors' North American workforce of 124,000. Investors welcomed the news. Of course they did, because who the hell cares about the human beings now not knowing how they're going to put food on the table for their, for their children, not knowing how they're going to pay their kids, you know, me- how they're going to pay for their medical bills, not knowing how they're going to pay their rent. Who gives a shit about those people, Right. Because we are the United Corporations of America, and human beings are just dollars on a balance sheet, not living, breathing, beating hearts. Words, word of the cutback in Canada had surfaced over the weekend just before GM's announcement. Workers walked out of the plant in uh, Oshawa, Ontario, uh, in a, into a driving rain, waving red flags and clad in ponchos bearing the logo of their union, Uh, Unifer, they began blocking truck entrances. And excuse me for one second, folks, while I'm live, I just have to respond to somebody associated with Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Live now. We'll call you after. Sorry. Got to do that live. Um, So here's the deal. Here's the deal. Oh, and President Trump, because President Trump doesn't actually have economic policy. Here's what he wrote on this. Very disappointed with General Motors and their CEO, Mary Barra, for closing plants in Ohio, Michigan, and Maryland. Nothing being closed in Mexico and China. The U.S. saved General Motors, and this is the thanks we get. We are now looking at cutting all GM subsidies, including for electric cars. General Motors made a big China bet years ago when they built plants there and in Mexico, don't think that bet is going to pay off. I am here to protect the American workers. That's a load of bullshit. Plants have been closing under Trump. Trump has done absolutely nothing to bring back plants. As I told you during the campaign, Trump wasn't going to do anything to bring back plants. And the only way he can bring back manufacturing is if he basically lets companies pay zero taxes. So then, yeah, maybe you bring back some jobs, but the taxpayers could get a tax increase to pay for the corporate welfare to these companies. But Trump has zero power to stop the United Corporations from taking a machete to jobs. Zero power. And by the way, Trump's tax cuts, I thought that was supposed to just stimulate an explosion in job creation. Well, it hasn't. It hasn't. It gave a sugar high. It allowed uh, stockholders. It allowed stockholders to buy back, do stock buybacks. It allowed CEOs to buy just another yacht for the summer. But it did nothing. Nothing. For working people in America. And here you have, here you have, By the way, you want to talk about the oligarchy that we live in? You want to talk about a corporate con job, which, by the way, is the title of my book? You could download that book at patreon.com slash Jordan Sheridan. You want to talk about a scam and a rigged, oligarchic, terrible, evil, greedy, immoral economy? Oh. G. 
GM made $22.6 million off of the bailout. The taxpayers lost $10.6 billion. After filing for bankruptcy five years ago, General Motors is now one of the most profitable companies in the world. GM has earned a stunning $22.6 billion since the dark days of the financial crisis when, their auto, when the automaker was bailed out by the U.S. government, meaning the taxpayers, you. But the taxpayers didn't fare nearly as well. They'd lost $10.6 billion by the, by the time the U.S. Treasury Department closed the books on the 49.5 bailout in December. Should say this story is from 2014, so the numbers are probably worse since then. So GM, GM lost, you know, we live in a free market, right? So GM kind of should have went bankrupt. But the taxpayers bailed out General Motors. And guess what happened? General Motors got richer. Taxpayers lost, what was it? $10.6 billion. And now after GM got away, got away like bandits, while we, the taxpayer, paid for that corporate welfare on steroids, you don't get a bailout from the government when you go bankrupt. But GM does. But, but J.P. Morgan does. But Bank of America does. Wells Fargo does. After GM robbed us blind, they're cutting off 15,000 jobs. Paul says 22.6 billion cities died. And by the way, I talk about Flint a lot. Go to Detroit. Go to Detroit. Because <laughs> I'll tell you, other than the very nice, gentrified, beautiful 10 blocks that they've poured all the money in, in downtown Detroit, they put a Whole Foods in there and some restaurants and some bars and some nice apartment complexes that the real estate developers bought, who bought off the politicians, the real estate developers are building those complexes in downtown Detroit. And then the media says, Detroit's coming back. Detroit is booming again. Yes, 10 blocks in Detroit are booming. 10 blocks in Detroit are booming while the rest of the city is like a dead carcass. And I'm not knocking you if you live in Detroit, but I've been there, I've covered it, and it's rotting. And you want to know something? By the way, I'm not against electric cars. Electric cars is a great idea. It's great for curbing climate change. But like in the like what happened when all the corporations wrote NAFTA, why aren't the actual workers that are losing their jobs, which not only hurts the workers and their families, you know, do, does anybody in government or these corporations have a heart? Do any of them care about the people that are now going to be struggling to put food on the table before Christmas? Who are losing their health care and their children might be losing their health care? So why is it that there was no transition plan here? Why is it that there was no plan to maybe train these workers on other vehicles? I think Richard Ojeda, Ojeda? Sorry if I'm mispronouncing, who ran for, uh, ran for office in West Virginia, lost, and now says he's running for president. I think he said it best. He went down to Detroit to basically scream about this. Here he is. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, Richard Ojeda here, standing outside of General Motors headquarters here in Detroit, Michigan. Last night I got word the 14,000 working class citizens that work for this company are going to be getting pink slips right before Christmas. That's unacceptable. You know, these, these guys right here received a bailout not too long ago to the tune of over $13 billion. $13 billion. And just recently, they got a tax break that gave them another $150 million. Their stock is now up 5%. This, this company stock just rose through the roof while they're sending 14,000 people home with a pink slip 
basically told that they no longer will have a job. You know, it's absolutely unacceptable. I'm running for the presidency of the United States of America, and I have a platform. And I'm going to go around, and I'm going to use my platform to highlight the issues going with the working class in this country and how this the working class are treated in this nation, and it's unacceptable. You know, these people right here are right now going to, going, going to go home and party because of the great uh, tax break that they've received and the bonus because their stocks just went up. When the rest of the people around here are going to go home and struggle and have to tell their kids that they're not going to be able to provide them a decent at Christmas. You know, it's unacceptable. They're going to give 7,000 buyouts to white-collar jobs, but the rest, the other 7,000 blue-collar workers, are going to get told, sorry, get out. And that's unacceptable. We deserve better. The working-class citizens deserve better. And these jackasses need to get their heads out of their ass and start doing right by the people that put them on that top floor in this building right here. Sappers clear the way, airborne all the way. Tell them, Rick. Tell them. That is Richard Ojeda. And I'm probably mispronouncing his last name. And he says he's running for president, so we'll see how that goes. He definitely is a working class Joe. Definitely a working class Joe. But he said the truth. He said the truth. First of all, why does General Motors continue to get subsidies? Why are these companies getting subsidies? when their CEOs are making hundreds of millions of dollars a year, when they're making hundreds, excuse me, they're making billions in profit per year. It's unbelievable. And by the way, what is happening with General Motors is showing, I don't care what Trump says on the campaign trail. I don't care what any neoliberal Democrat says on the campaign trail. The only way to actually safeguard jobs for working class people is to take money out of politics, is to get rid of Citizens United, is to reapply tight regulations on the unlimited amount of money in politics. Because the reason General Motors got away with this, getting a huge bailout, and then be, and then laying off 15,000 workers? It's because they bought off all the politicians. They bought off all the politicians. So, hey, if we had a country where politicians couldn't take endless money from corporations like General Motors and their CEOs, guess what? Those companies wouldn't get big subsidies anymore. The subsidies are part of the bribe. That's why they get the subsidies. It's, it's part of the bribe. And guess what? If we had programs that the government invested in to help grow jobs, then you know what? If industries had to change based on the to changing times, if industries, if things were moving towards automated self-driving cars or electric cars, as far as I could tell, they're not moving that quickly where you would replace 15,000 workers, then the government could put in place tra a transition transition programs for these workers so people don't just go hungry. Because not only are the families screwed right now, not only are mothers and fathers at home worried sick about how they're going to feed their children, especially during the holiday season, you're losing that tax revenue. We're losing that tax revenue of those workers. So if the government invested in jobs, if we didn't just let corporations do whatever the hell they wanted, then you, you wouldn't see this. And if changes need, needed to be made based on the changing times, automization, whatever, then you could have humane, efficient, and smart transition periods where maybe workers could be trained to do the jobs of tomorrow, as they say. But we don't have that because our government is run by the very plutocrats and corporations destroying the working class. That is why I call it the United Corporations of America. Say it with me, folks. United Corporations of America. I've been saying it for years. But the bottom line is this. We don't live in a democracy. We don't live in a free republic. We live in a legalized auction. And the corporations 
are controlling it because the corporations control our politicians. And I don't give a damn what Nancy Pelosi has to say. I don't give a damn how nice Kamala Harris sounds. I don't give a damn how nice Cory Booker sounds. I don't care how lovely Kirsten Gillibrand comes off. Follow the money. Platitudes are easy. Actions speak louder than words.